And finally, we have Aaron's oral on the Republic. Do you want to announce your titles, Aaron? Title of my essay is Genuine Experiences and Artificial Virtues. Yeah. Okay, Mr. McGee, do you um, yeah, please lead the discussion? Am I good? Can you hear me? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I'll just dive in and um, just first off, want to thank you, Aaron, for this essay. Um, it was a pleasure to read and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to learning more of your thoughts on the Republic because there's a lot to talk about. Um, so just diving in, um, you know, you, you start your essay talking about education. It seems like that is the scope of your essay is, is on education. And um, you kind of give two images of education, it seems. You know, you have first the, the education of the Guardians. And then in the second half, we get um, the, the, the image of the cave. Um, and my question to you is um, kind of simply, but what do you, to you, what kind of education is the cave? Because, you know, Plato or Socrates introduces it as an image, you know, now I'm going to make an image of our nature as it involves education and the lack of it. So I'm just wondering, like, more particularly, like, what sort of education are we shown in this image? What is it an image of? I think you mean within the within the confines of the book, right? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I don't know. That's an interesting distinction. I mean, <laughs> well, how know, I, you first want to answer it, you know? Mm, okay. So for the book itself, I just thought it was interesting, like that education system, just because it was very it was very different. It was the two types of education that was introduced. Like I introduced in my essay was. The first type of education for the guardians, which was meant to make them a lot more accepting and a lot more malleable and take advantage of that malleable stage of their younger lives to make them have really solid, strong moral virtues. And in turn, that would make them good rulers. That was, well, the point of the first one. The second one, which I found far more interesting, was one of the philosopher kings. And although, of course, there are a lot of fa different factors that was outlined in the book, like for example, gymnastics, mathematics, etc. I I focus on a lot of the moral, the mental, um, and the most base of their education, which is the pursuit of good. And and in itself, I don't think much of the education system is flawed. Like I I kind of I kind of almost go through everything very carefully in the essay and kind of critique everything. But my personal opinion, without me going, okay, this part may be wrong because of these, these, these reasons. I think the education system is interesting and good because the thing is, it what it what it essentially does and it is that it solidifies the basis of our thought processes. It's essentially what I think the point of the entire education system is. Mm -hmm. If we learn, right, if we learn mathematics, if we learn gymnastics, if we learn poetry, if we learn history, dialects, et cetera, et cetera, and it's based on an emotion that is not exactly good. For example, let's say you've learned all of these things due to the desire to rule over others, let's say, uh, your ambition. I mean, that would be fine. But there's also a, I, I don't want to say a taint, but it also has an effect on what you learn, right? And how that, how you use that knowledge later on is also affected by your original goal of what kind of mindset you had when you drove yourself to learn all this material. What I think the book was, the education system the book suggested was solidify the basis of they are doing this for a pursuit of good. And they, and part of the education is the pursuit of good. They're trying to find ways to discern between good and bad, because after that, no matter what they learn, it cannot be used negatively no matter what, because if their basis is good, and if they have, if they learn how to discern good versus evil, then later on, when they learn literally anything, anything, and by this, I mean, like, not just a formal education, but even skills in real life, just technical skills, let's say, they can, there is always the basis 
that I am doing this for the pursuit of good. And I think that's what I thought about the education system. Um, of course, in the essay, I outlined like, oh, it's flawed, like it has these problems and these loopholes, but that's that's more of a realistic approach, a realistic grounding almost of a idealistic kind of education system. And I think the ideal itself is very, very good. Yeah, so I think, I think the way Socrates puts it at some point um, is that in leaving the cave, they will look into the look into the thing at the things themselves, look at the sun, and it will be the look of the good. You know, it kind of aligns with the other image we've gotten of the divided line beforehand. Um, and then you have this. So I'm curious about maybe maybe I'm kind of zooming in now in like the education within the cave, or maybe what's happening in the cave. You have it on your lines on page seven, you say at the top, you say, instead of hiding an enormous chunk of information, the philosopher kings are meant to go through the cave, realize what is good and what is evil, then learn to discern and decide against evil and consciously choose what is good. And then skipping down a little bit, you say, after they, they are enlightened on the concept of the good, after they are enlightened on the concept of the good, they should go back into the cave to enlighten others. Um, and I'm curious, you know, it seems like maybe there could be some sense in which there's education within the cave. I'm, I'm wondering how, you know, you're seeing this enlightening of others. How would somebody who's seen the light, how would they enlighten somebody who's pinned to the, to the wall? Yes. So that's, I think, the one fundamental flaw that I think I pointed out that I, I thought was most major. Because I think it's completely... I think this is the part where, ironically, although I'm realistically grounding my essay using realism on an idealistic concept, this part is actually a realistic grounding by Plato on an idealistic concept. Because it's unrealistic to say, to put a huge number of people, for example, the entire guardian class, to all be enlightened, right? It's unreasonable to assume that we can put this entire group of people and all train them to be philosopher kings. Because those who who can do that, who have that innate ability or who has that innate talent, even with even through nurturing, is impossible. It's close to impossible. There's not going to be a lot of people who, even after going through all the education, uh, would genuinely understand and really go out of the cave. So it's a realistic grounding of, okay, since only a couple of them realistically will become philosopher kings, then the philosopher kings should come back to teach the ones who remain in the cave, even though, of course, they will not fully understand. At the very least, since the guardian class is the ruling class, they should fundamentally behave with that rule set, even though they do not fully understand the rules truly within their bones, they would still still be able to function using those base rules that the, that the philosopher kings can set. But I honestly think that even if of course like this is unrealistic the trying to get everyone to understand the concept of good is unrealistic and that is in fact a realistic grounding from plato and the socrates within 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 text itself i think but what i believe is everyone should be kind of plunged into that searing image of the good and the more even and the, also the a uh, rather a un- bad thing of the bad <laughs> the evil and and be and choose between those because in the first place if they are so easily corruptible that at the first sign of evil they turn away from god then it, there is a danger i believe where where they guardians are supposed to stand as a vanguard, vanguard against evil within the city against corruption within the city because they are the ruling class so it it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me that why would we not expose the guardians to these to evil and to good both at this both at the same time within the education because they are meant to stand against it for the rest of their lives instead of sheltering them which is which is my point within the essay yeah, yeah, I, I, I liked how you, you brought up this problem. I think you rightly address this, this issue that, you know, with, with your bird image in that, you know, the person who's gone up could see a bird for what it truly is, then come back and then lie and then corrupt 
whoever is down in the cave. So, um, you know, co- turning to the, the text of the Republic again, I think um, just in the very, some of the first lines of book seven or actually around um, 515E in my translation, you know, it says, and if one forced him to look at the light himself, wouldn't he have pain in his eyes? Um, and then skipping down, and, and if one were to drag him away from there by force along the rough, steep road up and didn't let go until he dragged him out into the light of the sun, wouldn't he be feeling pain? Um, so, you know, there is this sense in which, you know, it, it isn't teaching that's happening. That You know, you the people are turned um and maybe it is forceful and maybe it is painful, like you've said, but um, yeah, I, I, and I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how one does that. How does one turn somebody else? Because, mm. I mean, there's I, something that's not completely up to your your volition and it's not, you know, you're not completely in control when, you know, you're being turned and dragged out, you know? I think. Strangely, here I'm going to turn to Plato's logic because, well, Socrates' logic, depending on how you see it, I don't care. So I'm just going to say Plato's logic because it's his quote. But turning to Plato's logic, he essentially what he's doing is he's before these guardians are going out into society, he's preparing them by solidifying their virtues, right? He's basically giving them almost almost a preparation, like a steel wall within their minds for when they later on go into society and function as guardians, or that's how, that's supposed to, how, supposed to be how it functions. However, in my opinion, for the same exact reason, before the guardians go out into society, they should be more prepared. And because of this, they should be given almost like a simulation of life. Well, not, you know, like the matrix, but as in like a education system which challenges their ideals of good and bad. And using this, if they if they are uncorrupted by the bad and turns to the good, then they can probably function as guardians because there is a far, far smaller danger of them turning again. However, again, now actually answering your question of why, what, how, how would that turning process looks like? First off, within my essay, I do mention that it's, it's I don't think it's all, feasible, it's a super feasible, that we can artificially create that environment, even though I did say, oh, like a simulation of that situations of goods and bad would be nice, and it would be functional, it would work, but it may not be as realistic, again, going back to my realistic grounding within my essay. So so my, my thought would be, first off, life does this just naturally, it challenges our ideals, and makes us do some things and makes us do some bad and some good and we eventually reach a conclusion on how we need to act whether some consciously or consciously that doesn't matter so i would say first off real virtues can only be created by real life experience that's just a fact secondly um secondly even even i think but then i don't think there's also a problem of kind of almost prepping up for that challenge if that makes any sense prepping up for that ultimate choice between good and bad later on and i think that would be explicit knowledge of the good and bad before later on in their let's say teenage or in their 20s when they actually 